Okay, we are live for the Falsehoods of Fitness episode TRT is an advantage. TRT stands for Testosterone Replacement Therapy. So let's get some people in here. All right, Instagram's doing much better than Facebook is right now. Andrew, how you doing? Super, so even though I promised there was only uh, one reference I would get to per one of these shows, yeah, I'm gonna already break that rule because there's there's a couple pretty good ones. Uh, not all of them are clinical. One was done by uh, CNBC, just pulling in some data uh, for testosterone replacement, which I thought was pretty interesting. Apparently, uh, prescriptions are rapidly on the rise. And I'll wait for a second to get to uh, some of the some of the hardcore information. And I will say, like the reason I'll probably repeat this when <clears throat> we get a decent amount of people paying attention that that the um, the reason I wanted to do this falsehoods of fitness was the number of people wanted to know like what really is TRT and like like is it something I really like want or, or need or something like that or or sometimes I'm at, I'm at a conference uh, health fitness or even medical conference and I get some young guy coming up to me and he says hey how, how do I get like a prescription for that and I'll say how old are you the guy says I'm 25 years old you wouldn't want a prescription for that because you may end up with lower testosterone after you start taking testosterone. Maybe even your prescribed dosage won't even turn out as well as what you have naturally in your system. And then you don't really want to be on like an injectable chemical for a long period of time. So, you know, like there's obviously some people who don't understand really anything about it uh, and think it's somehow an advantage and it's just not um, really designed for people with deficiencies. So, okay, we've got a whole bunch of people. Um, should I answer a couple questions first, do you think? You just give it another, another couple minutes? No? Okay, I'll go ahead and start. <clears throat> So I'll repeat what I said. Uh, many people, even in our Facebook comments, people will say, well, I want a prescription, or, or this guy uh, has testosterone replacement therapy. Uh, as I mentioned that when I was on Dave Asprey's show. Uh, and what we saw with Dave Asprey's show, uh, what we saw in Dave Asprey's, you just turned that, there you go. Thank you, thank you. Uh, so, the question was asked, do you take testosterone? So, I've had a deficiency since I was uh, in my early 20s from just getting nailed hard uh, on the rugby field. I just got hit, uh, you know, had some testicular damage, got a prescription for testosterone replacement. This is like right, right when I was graduating and I, I played a little bit for a... Uh, club team uh, after that, played some, some rugby sevens after that. And so I went to, to my physician and I was having- Chevy says hey. Hey, hey Chevy. Uh, so I, I, uh, I went to see my physician and I was getting short of breath on the field, but I had been running, or a rugby game is 80 minutes of running. So I was very strong and I was running all the time. I played one of the faster positions. I played outside center, which is kind of like a wide receiver. Uh, and so I'm running all the time and now I'm having like a shortness of breath. And so what the physician said is you have some serious uh, uh, weak cardiac muscle. And I said, what the hell are you talking about? Like, I'm an athlete. Like my heart's weak. And so he said, I'm going to send you to the endocrinologist. So went to the endocrinologist and he says, you have 163 nanograms per deciliter of testosterone. Normal is between 350 and 1,000. Now, certain genetic groups of people 
have higher or lower. It's the main system, by the way, not the one here. Uh, <clears throat> so, so certain groups have higher, like African Americans have higher levels of testosterone than uh, Caucasians, Europeans, uh, and then Hispanics are a little bit lower than that, and typically Asian people are a little bit lower than that. But everybody lands within that 300. 50 to 1,000 nanograms per deciliter. And there's other normal, you know, normal levels based on different studies. But most physicians stay right, right in there. I had 163, and so I said, wow, you know, I had an injury. Uh, and so I was prescribed testosterone because it told me, you, you don't strengthen your cardiac muscle, which probably can't uh, function very well without this prescription, then you may have a heart attack in your 30s. And so I was like, all right, well, that, you made that pretty easy. So uh, <clears throat> part, of the, part of my interest in physical medicine was uh, driven by this experience. And so then, uh, then, then getting these questions and also having my research a few years ago branch out into anabolic hormones, uh, getting the body to trigger anabolic hormones. So that's one thing that's with the programming of X3 and with all the other things I recommend, a lot of, tr a lot of trainers, a lot of sports physiologists look towards activating a muscle to the highest degree, not towards any endocrine change. Whereas I'm trying to look only at endocrine changes. If your body triggers an anabolic hormone to go up after you do an activity, that's a much greater indicator that your body wants to grow something than just torturing a muscle. Because obviously if a growth factor increases, chances are that muscle is going to change. And we have the research that shows that too. So uh, everything that I'm encouraging people to do is focused on those strong hormonal changes. Now, um, when you look at normal levels of testosterone, so there's a 1996 study, Declining Androgens with Age, an overview. So this is pulling in a bunch of different research, so it's metadata. I just want to show everybody this. So you can see the highest levels of testosterone are actually for people that are in their uh, late 30s and early 40s. <coughs> Right. So somebody like me, if I didn't have any challenge or, or, or issue or damage, I would not want a prescription for testosterone because right now I'm at the peak for my age. So when somebody says, oh, there's a guy in his 40s and he's in great shape, it must be TRT. That person is just a stupid person. They don't know what they're talking about. Uh, so uh, and it's amazing how many of those there are on the internet. So what we, uh, what we see here is when, you're, when everything's fine, that's when you get your, your peak levels and when you get the prescription, it brings you right to your peak levels. The R in testosterone replacement, the TRT, the R means replacement. It doesn't mean you get more. It's just replacement. So uh, there's patients that get testosterone replacement and they don't see anything happen. And in fact, the uh, probably one of the larger labs, I'm friends with the owner, uh, was a patient of, of that lab for many, many years. Uh, and, and so what he says to me is like, he, he loves X3 because he gets everybody to take testosterone and then he gets them an X3. So obviously they're gonna put heavier loads based on the, the way X3 works. You're kind of tricking your body into heavier loads and then with more repetitions and then that upregulates uh, something else. Now what's the something else? This is a really important part of the conversation. And in fact, I was waiting to find like the exact right reference to explain this because I knew it to be true, but it just so happens that a couple days ago, a new study published uh, and this is Morton uh, and researchers, there's a whole list of them. Um, Morton and researchers 
<clears throat> and it's called muscle antigen receptors, not hormones, induce skeletal muscle hypertrophy. So what does that mean? That means that it's the amount of receptors that you have active, not the amount of testosterone in your system, which also goes to the amount of free testosterone that you hear about. Well, the amount of free testosterone is testosterone that can be appropriated to an androgen receptor. Well, that calling it free testosterone is like a, a mysterious function of the body that has to do with age. Does it? Or is that getting cause and effect backwards? I would say it's getting cause and effect backwards based on this study because the amount of potential receptors you have is how much of that chemical is going to find its way into the muscle and then cause growth. So now that we know this, somebody who, and this is why somebody can take an anabolic chemical and then if they don't work out or they work out with really light weight, nothing happens. They don't change at all. And hence, like what, what has been seen with that uh, uh, TRT lab that that I know, know the owner of. <clears throat> so, so many of these guys, they get the hormone in their system and then they, they just don't find time to exercise or they exercise really light because they're afraid of getting hurt and absolutely nothing happens. They don't build muscle because you gotta put heavy load through the muscle to upregulate the amount of receptors that are looking for it. So, that's, that's really uh, the, the summation on, on testosterone replacement therapy. Um, it's not really anything you want unless you really have a deficiency. And then as long as that deficiency is addressed, it's not going to get you really beyond anywhere normal unless you're putting tremendous loads through the body. I have a strategy of doing that, but that's true in general as well. So, that kind of concludes, I'm sure there's a ton of questions,